Hello. Hello, teachers. Let me see if everything's working here. If it's on here, if it's on uh, YouTube, then it's working well. We're going to be in both places, both here on YouTube and here on Instagram as well. Let me just connect both places so we can be live in two platforms. Wow, look at that. Correcting students. Hello, let me see if you're here. We already have a title. Yes, live in both places. Hello, everyone. Uh, okay, so we're here. Is the, yes, is the chat working? Hello, hello, teachers. Is the chat, if you're watching on uh, YouTube, let me know if the chat is working because I can see it. Why not? Why not? Why not? Chat, that's about a chat overview. We play the chat overview, yes. Okay. All right, I think it's working, but if you are watching on YouTube, let me know if the chat is already working, okay? Because it's not showing for me and I don't know what's going on. Hello, everybody. Hi, Tulio. Tulio, I try to talk to you these days. Check your telegram, please. Good to see you here. Hi, Gabi. Hi, Martina. Alexandro. Giovanna. Ana Bia. Vivi. Jacqueline. Let me write the topic here for today. Correcting students. Students, yes, correcting students. Okay, now it's here, now it's working. Comment is pinned. I don't know why it's not logging in, but I think it is. Hello, Jackie, I love the attitude, right? My future mentor. <laughs> Excellent. Hello, Inglés para você. Ready to join us here, guys. Ready to see everything. Well, I'm just weirded by the thing that is showing here on YouTube, but let's see how it's going to be. You can interact here. If you're there, let me know how it's going because I want you to share a lot with me about the things that you've been doing to correct your students. Hello, Israel. Hello, Jamila. Hello, Mila. Excellent. First, let me know if this is something that concerns you. I've been getting questions about uh, how to correct students and how you do it. Uh, yes, I never know, Giovanna, if it's good morning or afternoon. I haven't had lunch yet. And for me, it sounds like a good morning. But I think we're always going to, to have, you know, that thing to decide when we're starting here. Okay? Hello, Liz. Let me know here, teachers, if you have... Um, if you question yourself sometimes, if that is something that concerns you about the way you correct your students, if you know how you how you do it, if uh, that is something that you would like to know, to learn a little bit more. I know that the teachers who are already taking pro, our teacher training course, there is a whole module about correcting people, correcting students, right? But I think it's always good for us to bring this uh, topic up uh, not just for correcting students, but correcting people in general, right? Uh, Giovanna says, as far as I studied, it's good to correct mistakes, but not errors. Okay, we can talk about that too. That's a very nice approach to it. Hello, Fabricio. Teachers, I see that there are some teachers watching on YouTube. Send me a message in the on the chat just for me to see if it's working, okay? Because I can't see it. I really can't see it, and I don't know why. If, you, if we can't, then we'll have to talk about it in the comments. All right. So, uh, hello, Pachi. Hello, Yeda, Fernanda, Eduardo. Great, guys. So, some people are still joining us. But let's start talking about correcting people or correcting students and how we feel about it. So please share here what you feel is the best thing for us to do and how we can help students uh, concerning uh, the mistakes and the things that they say, and not just for English, but for everything that they do, and they expect us to do something about it. 
okay? So first of all, uh, correcting people in general, I think there is something that we should all know, and not just because we're teachers, but because we're people, but especially because we're teachers. We should be the ones that um, set the example. We have to be role models when it comes to correcting people. I see now, and especially now that we're opening this new thing of uh, bringing new teachers to our profile here. So we're, we're uh, posting many videos and things to the outside, to the, the, the outside of our community here uh, as a way to grow, right? We do it every once in a while. And especially when we're going to have a master class, when we're going to have an event, when we're going to open a new group. So that is the, the time when we come out of our bubble, right? And it's a, a great thing for us to do. I really like um, expanding, opa, expanding our uh, tribe, our profile here, but that's the time when we see um, the, the kind of behavior that some people have regarding mistakes, right? Um, sometimes we see people making mistakes when they're speaking in videos, right? Or sometimes you see a post that has a mistake or sometimes you see a text that has a mistake in Portuguese or in English, right? And as teachers, I think it's very, very delicate for us to just post a comment saying, ah, you should uh, learn Portuguese before you can talk about teaching English or um, something like, oh, there was a comma missing here or, um, oh, uh, there, this verb requires that preposition, whatever kind of correction, right, uh, can and should be done. I don't think it's a, a problem doing that, but there are ways for us to do it. And because we're teachers and because we're talking to our peers, right, we're talking to other teachers, it's very important that we have the intention of helping people. And that extends to our students as well, okay? And there is no way that you are a certain way with people in social media, with your friends, with the, the people that come to your profile, and in a different way with your students. If you have a different, uh, um, a different kind of behavior in these two situations, you're faking it somewhere, all right? And the thing is, if you really believe, if you really believe that what you're going to say, the correction you're going to share, or the tip you're going to share, or the, you know, heads up you're going to share about something that you saw on somebody's post regarding their language, if you set the intention that, ooh, you know, I saw something that Camila posted and there was a mistake, a typo or something there, and I want to help her, right? I want to help her with... Uh, with her career, with her message. I want her to get to more teachers. I want her to um, maybe learn with this thing, this thing here that I'm going to share. If you have a positive, a constructive intention, do it, okay? So that is the, ther the, 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 the thermometer. This is how we decide if we are going to share that correction or not. So first of all, ask yourself, if what you're going to say or share or do is going to help the other person. So you see a student that posted something, right? A student that posted something that they're very grateful for something and um, they're celebrating something and then they post, ah, blah, 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 thanks God. And then you're like, ooh, it's not thanks God, it's thank God, right? But you have the intention of helping that student or that friend or whoever is uh, reading that post, watching that video, or seeing that thing that your friend, student, whoever is posting. How do you believe would be the best way for you to, uh, to, to be effective in a very elegant way? Do you think that by posting a comment saying, ah, que mensagem linda, só que não é, thanks God, thank God, in front of everyone, right? Or do you believe that by sending a private message to that person saying, fulano, que legal a sua mensagem, que bom, né? Fico feliz que tal e tal coisa tenha acontecido. Deixa eu só ver que talvez você tenha digitado errado ou aqui só um detalhe para a tua mensagem ficar bem certinha. É, a gente diz thank God e não thanks God. Se der, corrige lá. Beijo, fulano. 
in a very sweet way, in a very constructive way, in a very positive, nice way. Okay, so how do you believe the other person is going to receive it better? If you just say something there in the comment in front of, in front of everyone, or if you do it in a more careful way? How do you believe the other person is going to perceive it better? Let me know here in the comments. Let me see, because I see comments going, coming up and I, I can't read them. The great question to do is, do I have the, to correct beginners? Oh, let's talk about that, right? I'm going to get to students, okay? So I just want to bring the, the biggest, the bigger concept of, of correcting people here, all right? But correcting in a rude way is cultural, a pity, but possible to change. Katja, not in my culture, right? Not in my culture. So let's let's think of the way uh, we believe people do things, and let's let's always uh, uh, that's funny to use that, right? Let's try not to generalize things like like oh, this is things that Brazilians do. People are like that. Maybe you are like this. Your family is like this. Your community, but no, right? No, correcting things in a rude way is not cultural. It's lack of culture, by the way, right? Lack of education and culture. And there is something that Mario Sergio Cortella said, and I really think his, he nailed it when he said that. Um, correct people privately and praise people public, publicly. And that is, I think, something we have to keep in mind for everyone, for all of the situations. All right? Let me just see, because there are some more comments in private. Um Send some private message correcting in a sweet way to do it. That's it, Luza. Luza Lee. Much better. Da -da 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 -da. Yes. So this, these are things for us to keep in mind because sometimes when we decide that we are going to correct someone, a student, a person out there, it like really like in the in the in a context there, sometimes we want to do it because uh, we we believe we're better. We believe we know more. We don't. Uh, we don't like what the person did. We we uh, envy, you know. And it's not something that we do consciously. It is just like ah, Thais achando, you know. And that is not something that helps everyone, you know. It's not something that will build anything, right? Katja said, yeah, not everyone. I I agree, Katja. I know what you mean, right? I really know what you mean, and I I um. I, I know what you wanted to say, and I, I understand it, okay? The thing is, if we agree with that, we have a, a, a lower chance of making a change, you know? Because we tend to say, like, oh, people do it, therefore I'll do it too, or there's nothing I can do. That is my, my, my thing there, you know? So when we see people in general, and by changing the way we are with everyone, the way we react to people, the way we, we say, like, you know what, is, am I going to help by saying something here, by uh, sharing this comment, by saying whatever I want to say, and by being that way with everyone, by being that way with our friends, with our colleagues, with our um, kids and students and everyone. And by changing the way we really are and we behave in general, it's going to help us be better teachers because then we just have to be natural when it comes to teaching, right? If you have to be somebody else when you're teaching, there's something wrong there, right? If you cannot be yourself when you're teaching, and being yourself is something that hurts other people. Being yourself is something that makes your students feel uncomfortable. There is something there. Or being yourself is like, oh, when I'm a teacher, I'm a better person. And in real life, you're not that way. You are hurting yourself, right? So my, my first thing here for this life is for us to be the same person. So if we change the way we react to mistakes we see in the world, to, you know, errors or mistakes, it doesn't matter, to what we see in the world, it's going to be easier for you to react and evaluate, right, uh, when we're in class, teaching a one-on-one -on -one class or a group. Does it make sense to you guys? Does it make sense? 
Um, I love it when my teacher corrects me. I asked her to, yes, that's it. Teachers are there to do that. You know, I like to be corrected. I do too, Katja. Always learning, but it has to be generous. 100%, 100%. That's it. You got it. Um, because even though we're teachers, we're prone to errors. Everyone is. Everyone is. And if you think, you know, that you don't make mistakes or, you know, your mistakes are different, right? My students want to be corrected even when I'm not supposed to. For instance, during the break in the ice or cut all, your students don't want anything. And you know me very well, right? Your students, ah, mas eu quero que seja assim, more. Você não quer nada, eu que mando aqui na aula. You know? Because <laughs> sometimes they, they just want to do it because they want to show how open they are to learn. You know, like for learning, it's like, no, I know when I'm supposed to correct you. And I know what I'm supposed to correct Okay, so first, this part here of changing the way you are, changing the way you react to things in general to help you be a better teacher, right, uh, is the first step for the real change, the real change. Because if you have to do it in an artificial way uh, uh, all the time, it's going to drain your energy. All right. Yeah, Carol says you're the best. Carol, because if you have, if you if you do what your students want you to do, that has other problems, right? Uh, in your classes and teaching. Oh, but I want you to correct. I want I want you to translate. You're like, mm, I don't work that way. You know, so you have to know better. You have to decide the the, the, the attitude and the way you're going to 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 correct and react to to your students. Okay. What if your student is too sensitive to correct? That's that's where we're getting, Mila. That's where we're getting now, okay? Um, the thing is, when you change the way you see things and the way you, 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 um, the way you communicate with other people, the way you interact with people, and in social media, we have to be very, very careful because uh, haters happened this this word this term started to exist more strongly when social media began, began became a thing because it's very easy to say something when you're behind your cell phone right when you can choose to show your face or not when you're going to post something there and you have no relationship with that person you just saw a post and it's very easy for a person to say wow that's ridiculous oh my god you're so ugly you know, or your English is horrible, your pronunciation is terrible, and then you don't know the other person there, the person doesn't know you, you know, so there's this distance that allows haters to exist, right, and sometimes, and, and, and again, not sometimes, all the times you see haters in the comments, and when we're talking here about correcting people, it's just people who are hurt, they, they, they have something inside that they don't like, or maybe they're seeing your video, your um, post or something, and they wish they were doing just like you were doing. So it's easier to try, you know, to, to bring you down, to put you down, to, you know, to say like, ah, you know, like she's recording that video, but it's full of mistakes. That's why I don't make videos, you know, because if you, um, if I were supposed, if I were to make videos with that many mistakes, I wouldn't do it. So it's like, ah, tô tranquilo. You know, so that's okay. That's the hater conversation. We can have a, a live about that the other day, right? Uh, cool, Karuzi, Karuzi, Karurizato. But now when it comes to students, when it comes to our class, it's a different kind of relationship, right? Our students are there and here talking to independent teachers, to teachers that uh, uh, attracted students online who have their own business, who uh, were hired to help people learn, okay? I know that when we're uh, working in a school, maybe the person didn't want to be there with you, right? But everything I'm going to say here can and should be used for any kind of context, especially for teachers that work independently, that have their own businesses, okay? A person hired you to learn the language, Right in your mind as a teacher, you might have the the the, the misconception that, that that oh so I have to correct everything. The person will want to be corrected. I have that student that when we did the talk, they say oh but I want you to say everything that I'm saying incorrectly. 
I want you to correct everything I'm saying because they are high C, right? And for the ones that already know the behavioral profiles, they are super analistas and they want everything to be perfect. And they believe that if you correct everything they're saying, they're going to be fluent. They're going to learn everything. They're getting the best from you and from classes, right? So the thing is, it's their problems, their sabotage, their, their, their everything that is in their minds that will say, oh, I'm not learning because that teacher is not correcting everything I'm saying. Eesh, that's not correct, right? No, 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 no. You're not speaking. You're not communicating. You're not learning everything. Not because I'm not correcting everything. There are other things there. You know, odds kids, okay? But there's something here. Uh, yeah, Katia was sharing something that is it. Fatima said, I almost use alunos que eu preciso trabalhar mais. I think the balance is, balance is the key. Uh, <laughs> what do you do with students that you look up and think, gosh, I have a big job to do? I know, that's exactly where we're going to get. When you plan your class, when you decide what you're going to teach, what your goal is for that class, uh, your objective could be something like this. I'm preparing this class today and I want my students that, uh, uh, that my students be able to uh, form sentences like this in the end of the class. Okay, so for example, I am going to teach, I'm going to start presenting, uh, we're going to talk about experiences we've had. Okay, so my class is going to be about places we have been to. So it's the first time, first class, my students are seeing this concept of I've been to Paris, I have never been to Germany, I have been to Ilha do Mel, uh, I've been to Ilha do Mel many times, right? Have you ever been to Europe? So that's the conversation we're going to have. That's the point of my class. We're talking about uh, experiences and places we have been to. And you know the grammar structure that will be involved there. It's the first class. So by the end of my class, I want my students to be able to ask a question about have you ever been to blah, 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 to answer by saying, I've, I've already, uh, actually, uh, I have been to Paris. I've already been to Paris, or I've never been to Paris, right? This is what I want my students to be able to produce by the end of my class, and my class is going to be guided to that goal, all right? My students will learn how to form that structure. They're going to be, a, they're going to need to know uh, how to say, have you ever been? I've never been. I've already been to Right, so this is the pronunciation, the, the points that they, the, the, the pronunciation topics that we we'll have to master. Right, I've never been to, um, and that's the only thing I'm going to teach that day. I'm going to correct things involving my goal. Right, if, my, uh, for example, where they're going to say Paris instead of Paris. Right? Maybe the places, because we're talking about places we have been to. Uh, if they say, oh, I've been to Japan, you're going to say you've been to Japan, Japan. That is the point of your class. You're going to focus on what your students need for that day and not everything else. And that answers the question that um, Luz Ali said, oh, we have so much to do. It, you're not going to solve the person's problem in just one class. But on that day, when your students are supposed to master to produce those three things, the question, the positive, and the, answer, the negative sentence for that, that is what you're going to focus on. Right? Okay? Especially um, regarding ac writing exercises, sometimes they make simple mistakes. I know it's not a big deal, but I feel uncomfortable if I don't correct. Let's, let's get there, right? When someone comes to me asking for classes, I make a level test. I recommend a schedule. Okay. <laughs> right. So get started. If they're communicating, that's the main goal. Right. So communicating in that thing that you plan for that class, that's your goal. And that's fine. 
And you also have to keep in mind if it's the first time you're teaching that or if it's the second, third, fourth, fifth time that you're teaching the same thing. Okay, if in that class your students are saying eh, heavy and you're like, no, it's not heavy, it's half. Okay, because that is war where you're going to focus. And what I like to say is uh, narrow the, 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 the parts and, and set your mind to what you're going to correct. First thing in class. Okay, uh, the same goes for writing. If you're going to have your students write these questions down, you're going to see if they're spelling everything correctly, if they're using the right form of the verb, right? And that is where you're going to look. That's everything you're going to check. Does it make sense, guys, that what we're going to correct depends on what we decided was the goal for that class. And it's not like, oh, okay, so if they're going to tell me another story, if they're going to say something else, I have to correct everything. No, we don't. Okay? Because if you work that way since the beginning, you start to clean, you know, the, 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 uh, you start to, to make them be better, but with the, 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 the number of things they can manage each day. It's not just like everything. It's like, oh, my God. And can you imagine for a student that has a class with you and you correct everything? And I know that sometimes we have students that, you know, oh, my God, if you were going to make a list of things that needed to be corrected, bring me more paper. But how does it help a student? You know, what is the point in doing that? For you, for the student, for the student's motivation, for the goal of your class, what's the point? Nobody wins anything. Nobody gets anything. Ah, oh, but I'm the teacher. I have to do it. That's your ego talking. Oh, but the student is going to think that I didn't notice. The student doesn't have to think anything because you're going to explain that. You're going to say, look, we're going to focus on this thing here, and this is how you're going to develop. I'm not going to focus on all the mistakes you're making all the time. That's not how it works. Because in life, you don't focus on, ev on everything that is going wrong. You see what's going right, and you choose one thing to correct today. Remember, because of the way you are in life, that's easy for you to decide the way you are in class. Right? Oh, sua pro, sua pro de inglês. Geralmente, quando corrige alunos absolutamente tudo, o aluno perde o fio da meada para falar algo. Gente, eu odiaria um professor que me corrige tudo. Let me tell you a story. Um, I've been practicing yoga for the last uh, 13 to 14 years, right? And uh, with the same method, I use the, uh, I go to the, the rose method, right? I love them. By the way, Friday, the live is going to be with uh, my instructor. And uh, we're always learning. We're always improving. Okay. I've had many instructors. I've had, I've been in many schools from the same method, but with different teachers, right? Different instructors, And I know that there are some things I can do well. There are some things I can't do well yet, right? There are things that I'm developing that are things that I do a lot better than when I did before. There are things that I used to do better, but because I don't practice, I, you know, that thing so much, I kind of, you know, like my flexibility was not so good for it. that asana. Okay, right? I know that. And because I've been there for so long, I can see my my development in different areas and i can see where i need to develop more okay uh, uh, instructors usually see when you have your, your instructor they see uh, and the same thing goes for english for english teachers right they see how you've been improving so noticing what you've been improving is something great however uh once i had this instructor he was not my instructor but he would be there for some classes that he, even though I was doing not just me, but people in class, right? Other people practicing. Even though we would be doing our best, we would be, you know, trying, you know, everything we could and everybody there already knows more or less how to, how to behave and how to do things. There are some things that we can't do, right? There are some things that are still not strong enough. You still don't know where to, you know, find your balance. And he would... Only, I swear to God, I he would only correct us. He would only tell us everything that was not working, 
right? He wouldn't say the things that we were doing right. Not a bad person, a very cool person, but as a teacher, he chose to focus, in my opinion, in the wrong place. On the wrong on the wrong thing side of the thing so okay you're there trying to 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 make that asana asana is, is the positions you have right and then you you can do something better but your arm is still not straight or your leg is still not flat not you know like going to the place it has to go so instead of saying wow you really did this part right why don't you try you know like this why don't you balance a little bit more like that why don't you and then instead it would be Ah, but you're still not doing this right. Yeah, the right way is like this. Who was winning what in that situation? And that's the same thing that happens. The same thing that happens in our class when you start correcting or just say, talking about everything that is not right. That's not good for you. That's not good for your students or students. They may even say that, yeah, that's it, teacher. You know, I want you to do this. Yeah, you really have to tell me everything I'm doing wrong. You know, oh, I know I need to work more. They say that because it's the right thing to say. But deep inside, they're like, I don't, I, you know, I don't feel good. I don't feel good about myself. I don't like, you know, like that. I don't know these things. Nobody's proud to make mistakes. Nobody likes making mistakes. We're adults, we're mature, right? And we learn how to grow with our mistakes. But I don't like making mistakes, do you? You see the point of correcting everything. It's not the, 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 the idea of correcting, but it's focusing on the negative side of everything. So why? Why? What's the point, right? Uh, totally agree with you, Danny. Hello, Danny. Okay, let me see what else totally makes sense. When students are doing a speaking exercise and there's one student that keeps correcting the others, oh my God, Giovanna, no, 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 no. Yeah, that, that sucks, right? And we have to be the ones saying, guys, now it's not the time to correct. Now it's not the time to correct, okay? So let's we're going to do it in the end and let me do this part, okay? And then and something I like to say, G, to students like that, I said, deixa a parte chata para mim. Tá? Deixa a parte chata para mim, de corrigir as pessoas. Don't worry. And I would say like, mm, you know, not nice. You see? Students feel like all, all they do is wrong. That's it, Talita. And we as teachers, and because you're here, and if you're taking BTE Pro, all of my courses, you already know the power of positive intelligence. And positive intelligence is not like, ah, unicorns and rainbows, and that's so beautiful. No, it's a science that we have to know and we have to use so that our students can learn. So choosing what you're going to correct and knowing that naturally, that you kind of shut down. And I know that as teachers, I am very picky, you know, about mistakes, my mistakes and other people's mistakes. I've, I've worked uh, with uh, task revision, you know, like uh, reviewing tasks for many years and I have a good eye for spotting mistakes, but I'm not, you know, flawless. There are many of our posts that go with mistakes and it's like, what can we do? You know, when we can correct them, we correct them. When we can't, then we can't. Right? So it's something that I have to deal with and it's not my student's fault. Okay? And then if it's something that you, you just, you've been working with the past, right? You've been teaching the past with your students. You're teaching beginners and they're learning how to talk about yesterday, the things they did yesterday. And it's the sixth class when you're talking about, so what did you eat yesterday? What time did you wake up yesterday? And your students are still saying, ah, I ate she, right? And then maybe it's the time for you to really stop and make a class, prepare a class for pronunciation, make them repeat and drill a lot. So they say, I ate I ate a sandwich, I had a sandwich, I ate eggs in the morning, you know. So, and work a lot on that thing, that specific thing. But why? Because your class is about the past. Not just because you're picky about that person, right? You're talking about it. These are the verbs, the words, the vocabulary that they should master. And it's been a few classes, so it's not the first time the person says that. And that is the reason why you're bringing that up. You're correcting that. 
as a group. If it's a one-on-one class, you can say fulano, but say that again with this word here pronounced correctly. Instead of just saying, you know, just like, okay, one more time. And they're like, ah, eight. Okay, so say the sentence again. Oh, I ate, 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 ate. You know, try something like make it fun, make it light, but just for that thing that matters, not for everything, not for everything, right? Sometimes they're able to even correct themselves. We don't even have to mention anything. Thanks, Max English. That's so true. And that's something we should uh, reinforce all the time, right? Okay. Frustration will make them give up and quit. Anna, and maybe say like, ah, you know what? I don't recommend that person. Do you think I recommend that instructor I told you? Of course not. Of course not. Do you think I would avoid going to class when he was there? Mm -hmm. I would ask, ah, so who is the instructor that day? Well, on, ah. Mm -hmm. You know, and these are the things that happen to people and to students especially. And I see many times that students, they quit, they miss classes, they cancel classes, they're late for class, and then you don't know why. You know, so show them what they can do already. Show them how much they have developed. Focus on the other part and uh, be careful the way you correct people. Be careful the way you correct people in general, you know, even with your kids, even, you know, like with your friends. And I would say especially with your kids and people you love. Not that you don't love your students, but sometimes we're nicer with our, with our students and not as nice with our sisters and brothers, parents, you know. So be careful. Be careful how you do it. You know, the other, like the girls, for example, my girls, they, they, many times they say the grais chapéis, you know, because they're kids and they're learning to say the plural form. So they finish their story, right? And I'm like, see, sí, de graus, de graus, beleza? Plural, um degrau, dois degraus. Eu sei que é diferente, que às vezes a gente pensa, né, assim, que é do, no, numa outra regra, mas é degraus, Tá? Fine. She finished her story. I, she didn't that, like. I didn't cut her her excitement to tell me what what she wanted to tell me. You know. Nossa, papai tem muitos chapéus mesmo, né? Não sei que, né? Yeah, papai tem muitos chapéus. Chapéus, não chapéus. But let the person tell the story first. Remember, communication is the most important thing. Right, and then they'll remember. They'll remember things, but. Positive emotions, they're much more powerful than negative emotions. We know that. Many, many studies show that. So stop fighting these things. Oh, but if I bring all of the mistakes, they're going to think that I'm very careful and attentive here. Mm -mm. Deep inside, they're going to think, oh, that person, I don't like being around that person. And that's not the feeling you want from your students. You want them to feel good. You want them to see that they can. How many of your students come to you saying, I don't know anything? And then when you start showing that they know many things, they're like, see, you already know all of that. Right? Uh, they feel they're doing better than yesterday. Hi, Mari. If we correct them all the time, they'll feel more unmotivated. Yes. Their, their motivation is going to go down the drain, Mari. You're absolutely right. Yeah? Sometimes some of my students get ashamed to read in class, and I always say that they are in a good way, getting better each class. Don't be ashamed. We're on the same boat. I love when you read. And Nivea, the thing is, uh, when you're asking them to read aloud, it's like read the way you would, like the, the best you can. Don't worry. That's not the point, but I, that's just practicing. Okay, let them do it. And something else, Nivia, I love to tell my students is like, aqui é o lugar de fazer erro. Aqui é o lugar de errar. Que vocês errem muito aqui na aula e não errem quando vocês estiverem no trabalho, quando vocês estiverem viajando. Então, erra aqui. Se joga, vai mesmo. Aqui é o lugar, ó, estamos protegidinho aqui. E aqui a gente está, sabe, aqui é o lugar de fazer isso. By saying that to my students, they would say like, okay, 
And I would tell them about my mistakes or sharing the vulnerabilities, telling them that I learn English every day, that there are words I don't know, that sometimes I mispronounce things, and but then I learn. For teachers, it's even harder, right? Because it's very hard for someone to correct a teacher. That's why we created Upgrade, our course of English for English teachers, because right, we need help too. We need someone who looks and says, mm, you know, that's not right but let's do it in a constructive way, okay? We also have to observe people, people's personalities. Yesterday, I was talking to a friend, which is very sensitive, and she was complaining about her teacher. She's the kind of person who we have to understand before start correcting. And for, uh, especially with very sensitive people, we have to make them feel strong because they're sensitive for a reason, right? And make them feel strong, like, look, when, when we say something, when, when, I, when, I, when I practice pronunciation or whatever you're writing wrong, it's to make you stronger. It's not about you. It's about the word you said. And make it very, very separate, you know? Your English is not you. This mistake is not you. You are a wonderful person. You're creative. You're kind. You're funny. You're all of these things. You didn't stop being this way because of this mistake or these mistakes. Say these things. Don't assume that your students already know that. And the same thing for your kids, for people in general. You know, so I like this is the thing. You keep on being this amazing person. That didn't change. Right? You are going to get better. You are going to learn. You are learning. Remember, blah, 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 and how you are now. This is something that you have to do as a teacher for your students, right? Sometimes I do that with my students when they make a mistake. I try to use that sentence again in the right way. It's pretty effective and I don't have to correct them directly. That's a great strategy, Ludmila. That's great. Sempre fala que é o nosso laboratório. True. Yes. Yes. That's it, Lucas. Aqui você pode errar, consertar. And that's the place to do it, right? In speaking activities, it's important to hear, take notes, and correct later. Some mistakes take time to correct. If it's not something that is part of the plan in your class, then you can ask, you can correct later, right, Marcelo? But if it's part of the goals in your class, then do it, right? And if you reduce the number of things that your students have to master on each day, it's easier for everyone, right? Some kids correct their moms not very nicely, and my students feels like talking to them. I, uh, I didn't understand what you meant. Can you rephrase that? Because I think you typed something and the autocorrect changed it. The best moment of class is when the student self-corrects and giving time for them, allowing some time for them to notice that is key, right, Marcelo? Even outside, it's okay to make some mistakes. The most important is communication. Ma... Mara Rocha, that's, it's also true. And we have to help students remember that that is the, the first thing. Okay, we're always going to improve. We're always going to get better. But you should not just not speak or not participate, not interact because you're afraid of making mistakes, right? We have to keep that in mind and tell our students that too. When practicing reading, explain first that I will be interrupting them to teach them how to pronounce, how to get the right intonation. Dani, I don't think you should interrupt during the reading activity. If they're reading out loud, don't do it while they're speaking. Wait for them to finish or have them say few, like shorter texts. Don't interrupt people. Don't interrupt people. You know, go back to it. And instead of letting them read a whole like page, say, okay, so you're going to read two lines. Fulano is going to read two lines. And in the end, you do it because what's the point? of interrupting people. It's like, okay, I know I'm going to be interrupted. It's, you know, so you start on the wrong, you know, the wrong note. Oh, no, 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 para, para, no. That's, you know, like that is not, that 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 stops fluency. And if you're practicing, practicing something for pronunciation, reading aloud is not the best strategy. Reading a sentence, a short phrase, then okay. But a whole thing, you know, let them do it. If it's like unblocking, unlocking, let them say it. Let them say it. Right? Le, 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 le. You know, then that's why you shouldn't interrupt them. 
Sometimes when I notice that they're doing the same mistakes over and over, I prepare one part of the class to show some random sentences with an incorrect pattern and ask them to tell me what it is. That's a great way to start the next class, right, Kabi? So get all the mistakes that they're, they've been making, and then you start the next class like that. I always like to say the phrase from Thomas Edison, I didn't make a mistake. I have just learned a new way of how, of how not to do it. See, that's a great approach for mistakes. What do I do is to let students read and correct the mistakes at the end of their reading, then okay, right? But interrupting, I really think it's a, it, it's something that cuts the positive flow, you know, of everything we're doing. And that is something for us to, to keep in mind, you know, really to keep in mind and not to do it, not to do it. Uh, now, let me see. Some kids correct uh, correct their moms not nicely. My niche are moms, and I need ideas if I should talk to the kids because they say, Mom, you're saying it wrong. Then it's Anna. Uh, if it's uh, um, kids are growing, they have the right to make mistakes like that. Right? And moms have to talk to their kids, not you. Okay, for example, let me tell you something, Anna, that will probably help you with this question you have. My husband is American. Uh, so at home, we speak English and Portuguese, right? And sometimes uh, we watch movies in English and Portuguese. He speaks Portuguese with a very strong accent, right? And he makes mistakes all the time. He is fluent. He knows how to do everything in Portuguese, but sometimes he makes mistakes, right? When we're saying something, and sometimes we're there. Let me tell you a, a typical scene we have, right? Oh, no, we're having lunch. We're having lunch together. And then uh, Brian says something like, um, uh, Mas você fez a sua tarefa. Right? Você fez, because he's thinking, Eu fiz, você fiz. Right? And then Zu says, Ai, pai, você fez a tarefa. Why does she say it this way? Because she didn't do her homework and she wants to feel better or bigger or bigger than her dad, right? So what is our job as parents? And that's about correcting. Zu, quando você for corrigir o papai, seja mais legal. Seja mais bacana com ele. Fala o jeitinho certo. Pai, eu fiz a tarefa, mas você fez. O verbo é diferente. Né? Não ri dos erros das pessoas. Não é legal fazer isso. Não faz isso com o papai e não faz isso com ninguém. Porque as pessoas não vão gostar de você se você fizer desse jeito, tá? So this is something that has a much stronger uh, uh, power in kids' minds than to just like let them be that way or just have someone outside saying that. So teach this mom that is your client, your student to do it, to say, look, you know, it's not nice to correct people, to make fun of people making mistakes. People won't like you, your friends at school won't like it, you know? So you really want to help, right? You want to help me. And I thank you so much for doing that. But let's do it in a different way. How could you do it in a positive way? And that is something we have to do to our kids. But I think the mom will have a lot more power than you, right? Um, I usually write down their more relevant mistake while they're reading. And in the end, I go back and correct. That's it, mom. Mm -hmm. And especially with the things that are important that matter in that class. Not everything, okay? Reading aloud is important when the aim is to train the musicality of the language. That's it. But also, let's imagine a person reading a paragraph or something, and then you write down a list of 20 things that they mispronounced, right? Are you going to correct everything to say, yes, parabéns, querido, mas bem aqui, ó. You made all of these mistakes. You're like... Right? Then you defeat the purpose, don't you? But if you choose two or three things... You're like, oh, great, but remember, we're studying this part here. So this part here, how, how, do you, how can you pronounce that correctly? How, can you, how do you think it's the right way? Because you said this. And many times students are like, no, no falei isso, no. You're like, yes, I did, right? So um, the, I think the main point of correcting people is not just in the student-teacher-student relationship and environment. 
It's about uh, correcting people in general. And we may not be used to doing something in a certain way, but I strongly believe, strongly believe that if we change the way we are to people in general, we're going to be better with our students, in our classes, with our friends, and with, with everyone, right? And if you have something very serious to say to someone, if you have to correct something, always go and do it privately. As teachers, we have the, the excuse to do it in class, right? But do it in a way that is constructive. Do it in a way that is going to help your students learn more, be better, be comfortable making mistakes. Because yes, we're going to make mistakes all the time. Welcome to being a human being. Welcome to life, right? Um, but also being able to learn from the mistakes is the, the, the real thing that you want to teach your students. That you cannot say that it's okay to make mistakes, but then you feel you make them feel horrible when you make mistakes. And you don't mean it, but that's the result. So how come you say it's okay to make mistakes if making mistakes makes me feel stupid, makes me feel inferior? It makes no sense. Teacher saying that it's okay to make mistakes, it's fine, but I feel horrible because I only see the mistakes I make. I only see the bad things, like all the things that I'm not learning. So no, no am going to That's what their minds are going to see. But if you show them that we learn, we make progress, we have fun with the mistakes we make, then it's different. Then you're seeing that, you know? Exactly. A meta é corrigir para encorajar e não para deixar a pessoa insegura. Exatamente. Não é para acabar com a autoestima da pessoa, né? And that is something we have to keep in our minds. And sometimes we do it. And, and, and I really don't believe we mean it. That's not the point. But that's the, the final result. I will correct tudo. No, you won't. No, you won't. You don't have to. It's not necessary. And explain that to your students. Say, no. Mm -mm. And make comparisons. Tell them, like, look, if you started a, a swimming class, your instructor won't correct everything that you're doing wrong. He's going to look at something and correct that one thing. And that, practice, that, that day you're practicing, you're going to practice doing that thing right. And then next day you learn something else. That's how we're going to do it. Right? Correct them to overcome and improve and help them and find different ways to help them. Find, learn, improve yourself so that you can learn to help them improve. Does it make sense? Does it make sense, teachers? Mm -mm -mm. Uh, this has been the best way that I see uh, teachers being, being with their students, teachers getting better um, feedback and results from their students uh, by changing the way you are, first of all changing the way you correct people in general. And secondly, as teachers, knowing when it's essential and when it's not. Sometimes we, we, we're misguided by certain behaviors we had or certain uh, experiences we had, but don't let that uh, take over. Know better and know exactly what you're doing. Own that, you know, own that. Corrigir tudo só aumenta o ego de quem está corrigindo. É isso mesmo, Angélica. É difícil de dizer isso, mas é verdade, né? É verdade. Uh, I think I need to learn how to correct people outside lessons because I feel I'm nicer with students than I am with the rest of people. Mm -hmm. With yourself. That's it, guys. That's it. Trust me. If you change the way you are for yourself and in general, you're going to change with your students as well. And you're going to find the perfect balance Right, the perfect balance because you changed and because you know exactly why you're doing what you're doing. It's not like, oh, eu sou durona mesmo, eu corrijo todo mundo. No. Or maybe you're too nice, you know, boazinha, não corrige nada. Também não é bom. We have to find a perfect balance, but not just by the air. That's not how we find it. There is a way, there is a methodology, there is there are techniques, there are hundreds of ways uh, to correct students. There are many things we can do to turn mistakes into learning points in our class. This is there is a lot of that in our course pro the teacher training course, right? And especially, especially because we're dealing with people, right? We need to be 
nicer with people but being nice doesn't mean letting them make mistakes you know and just like oh, okay and we're just gonna smile and we're gonna no we have to do our jobs we have to to be the teachers they hired us to be right and uh we have to make them grow but always in a constructive way always in a positive way right don't be too hard on ourselves oh yes being too hard on yourself doesn't help either okay so teachers, I hope this one has helped you, uh, has enlightened your ideas on correcting students and correcting people. I'm going to leave this one saved on YouTube. So if you want to watch it again, if you want to send it to somebody else, to a teacher, to a student, maybe, right, so that they understand how you're going to start acting. It's in our YouTube channel here, Best Teacher Ever. I'm going to save it there. It's easier for everyone to watch. All right. And thank you so much for being here. Thanks for joining me. Uh, we're going to have li um, a special live on Friday with my yoga instructor, by the way, that I mentioned yoga today a lot. So save the date. Okay. And I'll see you tomorrow at noon, as we do from Monday to Friday lives every day at lunchtime. Okay. Thanks for being here. Beijo enorme para vocês. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, teachers who are watching here on YouTube. This one's going to be saved so you can watch it later. Thank you so much. See you later.